Hi, I'm Dr. Derek Sun. I'm an orthopedic spine fellowship trained neurosurgeon at the Houston Methodist Sugarland Hospital, Department of Neurosurgery. Uh, my practice encompasses all of spine surgery uh, with a focus uh, on complex spine surgery. Uh, today, I would like to talk about a couple of interesting cases. Uh, the first one, this is a 57-year-old uh, pleasant woman who presents with low back pain and radiation of pain down her left leg. She had a previous L4 to S1 transforaminal lumbar interbody fusion back in 2012 by another spine surgeon. Unfortunately, she fell several months after that surgery and the peak cage had migrated and extruded. Her previous surgeon tried to take her back to the operating room to reposition the cage, but was unsuccessful. The cage was left in place and she was told there was nothing to do. So she has been suffering with this pain, uh, eight to nine out of 10 on the pain scale for the past 10 years. She's tried various uh, conservative treatment measures without any relief. Uh, and she ended up driving five hours to come see me. She came with this MRI. Uh, this is the T2 sagittal MRI. As you can see there, uh, there is a hypo intense uh, lesion protruding into the spinal canal. On the right, you'll see uh, T2 axial images. Uh, this is about the level of L4. And as we scroll down, you'll see that right there, there's a large lesion uh, causing central and lateral recess uh, stenosis. As part of our workup, we obtained a CT scan uh, to look at the bony fusion and look at the hardware. At the level of L5S1, uh, you can see there the green indicates the spinal canal and the blue indicates where the uh, cage is supposed to be. However, at L4, L5, the green here is the spinal canal and the cage is migrated uh, back causing severe compression. So our diagnosis is fairly straightforward. Uh, this is lumbar radiculopathy, secondary to extruded peak cage. She also has pseudoarthrosis at L4, L5. She also has some degenerative disc disease at L2, 3 and L3, 4, but it was deemed uh, not symptomatic. So we decided to leave that alone. My surgery goals are number one, decompress the central canal and the lateral recess, uh, and then achieve solid fusion at L4, 5. We debated various approaches, including anteriorly, to try to retrieve the cage via a lift type of approach, uh, going laterally through the side, uh, or going from posteriorly. Uh, I felt that because of how retroposed uh, this cage was, that the safest way would be to approach everything from a posterior. So at the time of surgery, we found that she did indeed have a solid fusion at L5S1. So all of our attention was focused at the L4, L5 level. So we performed a complete facetectomy at L4, L5, and we did identify the peak cage. It was definitely tenting up the dura, and it was encasing quite a bit of scar tissue. And it was very hard to tell when, where the scar tissue ends and where the dura starts. Uh, so we brought in the operative microscope, and just very carefully through sharp dissection, we're able to come obliquely, uh, identify the cage, and using um, uh, Penfield instruments to slowly dissect the scar tissue off of the cage. When enough of the cage has been identified, we use a combination of drill and osteotome to chip away the cage and remove the cage uh, piecemeal without causing any injury to the dura or the nerve. And after that, we did a thorough disc preparation and a new titanium cage was inserted. Uh, Postoperatively, she did great. Her left leg pain was gone immediately, uh, which is great uh, because of how long she's been dealing with this. Uh, and she was discharged home on postoperative day two. Uh, at the six months post-op visit, she was doing very well. These are some x-rays uh, showing the L4, L5 titanium cage is appropriately positioned. Uh, this is another case, uh, it's a little bit more involved. This is a 77 year old gentleman with hypertension and diabetes. Uh, who presents with chronic low back pain, bilateral lower extremity pain, numbness, weakness, and even bowel and bladder dysfunction. He also had a L4, L5 uh, transforaminal lumbar interbody fusion back in 2008. Uh, but more recently, he suffered a mechanical fall in January of 2021. He presented to the hospital and he underwent an L1 through L3 laminectomy and medial facetectomy without any instrumentation or fusion by another su surgeon. And I'll talk about in just a few slides why that was relevant. Currently, he complains of eight out of 10 pain with progressive weakness, numbness, 
down both legs. He had been using a walker for ambulation for the past four years, but now he's unable to walk. Uh, he also reports more recent bowel and bladder dysfunction. These are his x-rays. Uh, as you can see there, uh, the L4, L5 hardware is in place. Um, on the AP x-ray, you can see that at the level of L1, 2, and L2, 3, he has an extraordinary amount of uh, lateral osteophyte formation. This is his uh, MRI, T2 sagittal sequence. And right there, I highlighted a, a large hypointense lesion. Uh, this looks like an extruded disc fragment uh, behind the L3 vertebral body. Uh, this is like, likely coming from the L2, L3 uh, disc space. Here on the right side, these are axial T2 images uh, starting about the level of L2. And as I scroll down, you can see that despite the fact that he had a previous laminectomy and medial facetectomy, his spinal canal is still somewhat tight. And as we scroll through right there, you can see the start of the disc. And at that particular level, uh, this is right behind the L3 uh, retrieval body. Uh, the disc is quite large and uh, completely obliterating the spinal canal. And so as part of our workup, we obtain a CT scan uh, to look at the status of the previous fusion. And interestingly enough, uh, the L4, L5 is surgically fused, but his L3, L4 is also autofused uh, via anterior osteophytes, as well as his L5, S1. And looking at above, his T10, T11, all the way down to L1 are also fused. So what that means is he has two lever arms uh, from T10 down to L1, and from L3 down to S1, um, causing a lot of increased biomechanical stress at L1, L2, and L2, L3. And this is likely uh, either not diagnosed or underappreciated um, by the previous surgeon. So my diagnosis is lumbar stenosis, secondary to congenitally narrow spinal canal, a large disc extrusion, and caught equina syndrome. He also has diffuse idiopathic skeletal hyperostosis. So the goal of my surgery is to, number one, uh, decompress the nerves um, by removing that disc fragment, but also, two, stabilizing the L1, L2, and L3 segments. So I did it via a L1 to L3 lateral transos lumbar interbody fusion, uh, placing spacers to uh, give biomechanical support at that level, uh, and then performed an L1 to L3 a revision laminectomy and a very aggressive bilateral facetectomy. Uh, and then I was able to retrieve that disc fragment uh, from both sides. And because L3 through S1 were already fused, we decided to leave the old hardware alone. These are his hardware, uh, these are his uh, x rays after surgery. As you can see, the L1, L2, L2, L3 uh, interbody spacers, as well as the pedicle screws and rods. He did great post op. Um, and his pain and uh, back and leg pain immediately improved. Uh, he had very minimal narcotic requirement. His bowel function uh, improved uh, significantly, uh, but he still had urinary retention. So he was transferred to acute rehab with Foley catheter in place. He did great at the two weeks post-op visit. However, he bounced back to the hospital four weeks post-op with severe pain. He had bent over in the restroom to change his Foley catheter and just felt a severe pain to the point that he could not uh, move. So he returned to the emergency department where a CT scan was obtained. I'll cut to the chase right there. At the inferior portion of the L3 vertebral body, we see a, a lucency all the way across. So he has a L3 bony chance fracture and in the setting of diffuse idiopathic skeletal hyperostosis is deemed very unstable. So we had to take him back to the operating room. So uh, the second surgery, we did a removal of the previous hardware at L4, L5, uh, and it re-instrumented uh, pedicle fixation from L1 down to S1 to stabilize this fracture. Uh, these are his post-op x-rays, uh, which shows appropriate hardware positioning. And post-operatively, he did great. Uh, pain immediately improved post-op. Uh, at the three, uh, three months post-op visit, he denied any pain his strength was steadily improving and he was starting to take steps with his walker again. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, once again, my name is Dr. Derek Sun. I am with Houston Methodist Sugarland Hospital, Department of Neurosurgery.